Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. However you're watching, wherever you're watching, however you're listening, wherever you're listening, it is the Bet Online Salute Detroit podcast. We got a full squad here today. We got a special guest, Mr. Lost in the Sauce himself. You guys watch him, Mr. USC Jay. Jay, how are you doing this evening? Man, I'm great, man. It's an absolute honor to be on here with you guys, man. I'm a fan of you guys as well. Always tune in to you guys, man. Good to be here. And we got our man fresh off of Christmas vacation. Big smile on his face. He has his five o'clock shadow. The mad scientist himself, 30 PhDs. Jamal, madman, Magni. Jamal, happy new year. Jay, happy, happy new, new year, year well, brother. Well, happy new year happy to everybody. New year. How are you doing? Happy New Year to everyone. Absolutely. First show of 24 and uh, so excited to to jump into it in this new year. Wishing everyone a wonderful holiday season. And we have the founder, the creator, the CEO. You're going in. This is year four, right, Ryan? Year four? Sounds right. Yeah, I think so. No. Yeah. Year four. You said you started during COVID. 2020. Yeah. It's 2024. Year four. Four years ago, this was just an idea. Look where we are now. Congratulations, Ryan. I'll tell you congratulations myself. I'm proud of you. Happy New Year to you, Ryan. How are you doing? Doing good. Thank you. We had a, a blast, the three of us, plus Skinny T hanging out over at the Madman's house ring, right before the New Year. I guess it was yep. a few days ago, but uh had a good time. And, and Jay, so pumped you're here with us to chat all things Trojans. I think it's going to be a blast. So thanks for jumping on and taking the time. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So if you guys haven't noticed, I'm dressed up today. In February 7th, there will be a man in a suit addressing our nation, telling us where we are, where we need to go. We have a nation of our own. And so I decided to dress up today and bring to you the state of the Trojan nation. Stand up real quick. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I will not do that. <laughs> so is it is it state of half a nation, Fred? Is that uh... <laughs> <laughs> bring you the state of the Trojan nation today. We're doing the state of the union. Um, I'll kick it off. So the season wasn't great. And we, we alluded to a lot of things. Um, Jamal harder than me, me harder than Ryan. Nobody's harder than Candace, right? Six and zero. we started off great, but we understood there was a lot of fluff to it. I even caught there was a lot of fluff to it. They wouldn't get their first test until Utah, Utah came. They failed the test. They went to South Bend, failed the test. There was a lot of clash. I called it culture. There was a culture clash. I don't think the culture was there that USC needed to get. And it was interesting. We thought recruiting was wrong. We were we were against the portal. I should say I. I should say we. I'll let you guys have your moment. We were against the portal. But not we. I was against the portal. They were renting players. There was not a lot of USC. You know, there wasn't USC. And, and Jamal understands where I'm coming from as far as, like, when you say, like, USC. It, it's it's different. You have a feeling. <clears throat> they lost their last five games. They went 1-6 at the end of the season. They barely squeaked out against Cal up in Berkeley in the new Memorial Stadium, which I hear is no different than the old Memorial Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> but something happened. J- J- December 28th, Wednesday night. Cold Wednesday night in San Diego at Petco Park. The Trojans took the field. And the first drive, they weren't their selves. They were their normal selves. And then all of a sudden, it clicked. We saw a team out there that we wanted to see the whole season. We saw a team out there that was like, wow. And, and just to top it off, we saw a team out there that has three years of eligibility by majority of the players. There was hope. There was a glimmer of hope. I will tell you this, Trojan Nation. We're very young. We're young up front on both sides. We're young in the defensive backfield. We're young at receiver. We're moderately young at quarterback, which we still can get three years from, depending on play. The future is bright for Trojan Nation. How does the future get bright for Trojan Nation? I still believe that you don't need to live in the portal. The recruiting class that they brought in is a great recruiting class from high school. Do you need some portal guys? 100%. But now you start to fill in. Now we need to get another receiver that's a little bit that adapts to USC. We may need to get another offensive lineman that's a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger, but adapts to USC. 
I still say we need to get some more D linemen in the portal. That's where we should live. But they have to understand the culture. The goal for SC to be successful as the Trojan Nation, the four of them to be successful on the field, is they have to understand the culture of USC. Not anybody could go to USC. Not anybody understands USC. But if you do go to that school, it's an opportunity. It's not a choice. And when you go into the portal, it has to be an opportunity that they take advantage of and they make the most of that opportunity. Zach, Zachariah Branch, 4.0 student. That's the best news I saw all year on Twitter, Instagram, everything. This freshman got a 4.0 at the University of Southern California. His future is bright on and off the field, and he understands that. We need more Zach Branches. We need more Miller Mosses. <laughs> We need more Taj Washingtons. I'll take a Taj Washington transfer every single day of the week because he came and embraced the culture. In order for USC to be successful, every player with Cardinal and Gold needs to embrace the culture. And I'll end with this. There's a reason why there's no names on the back of USC's jerseys. You know why? Because you don't play for yourself. You play for the logo. You play for the university. You represent the university. And that is the culture that is needed at the University of Southern California. With that being said, I do believe the future is bright. And I do believe we have an opportunity. And I do think we're going to be young and good. But we have to embrace the culture. I digress. So there's my State of the Union. I would like to pass it on to our guests. We have to be very humble hosts. I'd like to pass it on to USCJ. USCJ, what is your opinion of the State of the Union for USC? Wow, man, that was a, that was a loaded State of the Union, and uh, I mean, you said you hit on so many points. Um, number one, I think that I, I agree with a lot of that, and and I think what we seen, what we witnessed on December twenty eighth, was absolute revival. We seen we seen not only the fan base get revived, we seen players get revived, we seen teams get revived. And listen, let, let's just call it what it is. Lincoln Riley was lost in the sauce prior to that game. There Lincoln it is. Riley looks like he absolutely just got his mojo back. It looked like the Lincoln Riley. And it look, it, one of the things I said about Lincoln Riley was he's never been mistaken to be just a terrible play caller. Lincoln Riley, somehow, some way, he it seemed like he lost his identity throughout this year. And now all of a sudden we've seen the emergence of the Lincoln, you know, I felt so good. I can go back to sleep normally now, like I normally do, because we we seen a staff that looks like they got their mojo back. We seen a a team that got revived by Miller Moss. We seen a team that wanted to play for Miller Moss, and as a result, you know, you had positive positive uh, feedback, positive result, and we seen team a team that I wouldn't even say overachieved because some some say, oh, well, this was a you know, they're trying to discredit this Louisville team. This team was the number 16 ranked defense in the country. Um, and Miller Moss was able to do that. And contrary to popular belief, um, we've seen, a, you know, Caleb, and this is no disrespect to Caleb. If you hear this, Caleb, no disrespect. Um, he hadn't beat a ranked team this season. And so for Miller, it just speaks more to Miller Moss and the credit that he should be, you know, get as far as uh, his accomplishments. And, I, and I'm very, very, very excited about, about that aspect of it. Now, to the portal, I, I, I do. I believe that, you know, Taj Washington, he came from Memphis. I believe he, you know, he was a Trojan once he got there. And he, he you know, he, he bleed Trojan. And as a result, we've seen a guy that absolutely displayed leadership all across the board. When you look at this portal thing, to me, in my opinion, it's, it's attached to NIL. And that's the, that's the crazy thing about it. The portal NIL goes together. It's, it's like, if you want to be a portal player, you're not going to come. Most likely, most of them not coming to just to be a Trojan. They're coming. They want the bag. I mean, that's just the reality of where this thing is now. And so it's a tough, it's a thin line. Like, do we want to get the best player? Do we want to develop these players? I know we need a balance of it. I know Dabo Sweeney's lost in the sauce because he doesn't utilize the portal. So it's like, we're, we're, you know, what are we going to do with this? So as far as the overall state of the union aspect of it, I think USC is in a good place. I think the future, to your point, is a very is very bright right now, and um, I, I'm excited right now. Thank you very much. We will go to our man. I'm saving the best for last. I, I can't wait for this one. So just keep thinking, Jamal. I'm saving. I'm waiting. Saving you for last. Uh, 
So, Ryan, we're going to hand it off to you. Where's your state of the union for USC football? Yeah, uh, great. Uh, very um, statesman-like that you guys both did. So, well done. I don't know if I, it's tough to follow. Um, but I agree with all that, so I won't add. I won't repeat a lot of it. The, the thing I'll add, and a lot of it is still – you know, speech and hearsay, and we need to see more of it. But luckily we at least saw one instance of it on December 28th at the um, holiday bowl. And it's this shift, you know, you guys talk, obviously coach, you talk culture a lot uh, through your thing. And we talk about on the show all the time. And, you know, when they moved on from Alex Grinch and it seemed like as the season ended, it became this shift that Lincoln Riley talked about, like, we want guys that want to be here. And a lot of people question if Lincoln Riley wanted to be there, right? But at least everything he's saying from that point on is we want guys that are going to be here. We wish everyone the best. It's leaving the portal or that, you know, is flipping commitments. But we want the guys that want, just as you said, coach, that, you know, bleed Cardinal and gold and want to be here. They brought coaches in that seem to buy into that or at least can rebrand the, the style of play that can at least um, filter that. And then we saw that that speak and that talk displayed on December 28th. Now it's one game. We got to see a lot more of it, but at least we did see what they were able to accomplish in six weeks on the field. And now they have an entire off season with the new recruiting glass coming in um, with some of these transfer portal guys coming in. So um, yeah, I mean, I think we talked about it kind of on our last show too. I think they're in a good spot moving forward and it's now taking that, that speak and continuing to back it up with performance, with, you know, culture building, with, you know, they're probably still going to build out the, the defensive staff a little bit. They're still going to get some guys in the portal adding to that. So it's just continuing to put your money where your mouth is, as the saying goes, and and building upon what they've been saying. And then we saw it on in one instance, and now let's just see it continue on. So I think as, as the trend goes, it is bright. We'll see how bright it can get and if we can get back to where we want to go. And the only thing I'll say, lastly, sorry, um, with how bad the season ended and how bad – the defense was it's insane when you link it they you know they were hung with Washington for three and a half quarters they hung with Oregon for three and a half quarters and didn't deserve necessarily to win those games but the fact they did and we are about to see hopefully Washington you know win the national championship so you know if they can build on what they've done the last six weeks now hopefully we'll see not hanging with but actually winning those games and and playing the right way. Jay, I just want to let you know that is the worst I've ever heard Ryan talk about USC. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking he, about. <laughs> he legit called him out. So it's time to put your money where your mouth is. That is the worst. <laughs> and it was still optimistic. That's why we love Ryan. Ryan is the silver lining in all of our clouds. Ladies and gentlemen, get your pencils and papers out. Mr. PhD himself, Jamal, <laughs> where does your state of the union? No, I mean, I think you guys sort of nailed it in terms of some of the big topics here, obviously, in terms of culture, in terms of future, in terms of looking ahead uh, on on a bright note, kind of recapping the season really well, Fred. So I won't touch on any of that. What I will say is looking ahead now. I think we can put 2023 behind us. the, The year has officially come to a close. So looking ahead, where do we see the state of this program And there's a lot that I love and there's a lot that I don't love. And when we sort of look at the recruiting class, for instance, the incoming class, what I do love is that from the guys directly from high school, nine of the 19 commits were guys in the trenches. So offensive line, defensive line, really Lincoln Riley making an emphasis to say we got to get thicker. We need bigger human beings. We got to have a different mindset going into Big Ten play. Now, what I don't like is that there's only two five stars on this entire roster in terms of Zach Branch and Deuce Robinson, zero of which are on the defensive side. And even though stars don't mean everything, in a sense, there is a barometer. There should be a higher number there if you are USC. What I do like is some of the guys that they got. When you talk about Cameron Fountain, when you talk about Desmond Stevens, when you talk about the Arnold brothers, when you talk about Kamari Ramsey, when you talk about Zandamela, you know, the big kid out of Florida in terms of offensive line. Love all of those guys. I'm going to have a special eye on where those, all of those guys are sitting. What I don't like is that this recruiting class was 
18th by, by one outlet, 20th by another outlet. This is only the fourth time in 23 years that USC did not have a top 10 recruiting class. Even Clay Helton, for all of his problems and all of his concerns, was able to get top 10 recruiting classes. Lincoln Riley has not been able to. So that's a concern for me. What I do like is, obviously, Miller Moss taking the reins of this team. As someone who is a statesman for USC, we've talked at length what his story is and what he means to, to this USC program, as well as sort of the coaches that Lincoln Riley has brought in, like DeAnton Lynn, like Enns, like Belk, and really done a tremendous job there. What I don't like is the exodus of players that have left this roster for mysterious reasons. Malachi Nelson, Relique Brown, Domani Jackson, Corey Foreman. And what I don't like there is how the California pipeline seems to be eroding. And all sort of logic and history of college football would indicate that the way you succeed in this sport is you you taper off, you tape off your area, your locale, whether that was the U and the University of Miami, whether that was USC in its glory days, whether that was the University of Texas, whether that was LSU, whether that was Georgia, you tape off the area with a lot of richness of talent. And so what I don't like is USC seems to be giving that up, and now every recruit is a knife fight moving forward. So to me, there's a lot that I like. There's a lot that I don't like. I really like Lincoln Riley's emphasis moving forward on, you know, culture, on trenches, on sort of resetting, on play calling in the Big Ten. What I don't like is, and I'm, I'm glad what Ryan mentioned this, Kalen DeBoer, two years, generational quarterback, same conference, same style of play, is on the cusp of winning a national championship. And Lincoln Riley is in rebuild mode in year three. And Lincoln Riley is costing $10 million a year. And Kalen DeBoer is costing $4.2 million a year. So there's a lot what I like moving forward, but there's also a lot that I don't like. I still think this program is vectoring in the right direction. So I'm agreeing with you guys in terms of the optimism. But there are still some gaping holes and mysterious holes with this program that are still unexplainable to me and are not progressing fast enough for someone that is getting paid the amount of money that Lincoln Riley is getting paid. So to me, 2024 is going to be a pivotal year moving forward. A lot that I like, a lot I still don't like. Thank you very much, Jamal. <laughs> Here, what do they say? That, uh, your time is up. Your time is up. <laughs> my time is up. I rescind my time or whatever. I rescind yeah. my yeah, time, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. Um, that was good. So before we move forward, I want to let you guys know, Ryan mentioned it. Jamal mentioned it. I think Jay mentioned it. Monday, we got a big game. And if you want to get on that action on the game, go to BetOnline. BetOnline.ag is where you get all the up-to-date lines, local stats, odds, everything you need just to make your pocket a little bit bigger. If you want to go get on the action for Monday, go to BetOnline.ag. Put in promo code BELIEVE. That's B-L-E-A-B. You receive a 50% welcome bonus. BetOnline, where the game starts. So we got our State of the Union out. Let's talk a little bit of football while we still have some time. Some news came out today, and this is why I'm kind of, like, optimistic about SC. Some news came out today, and Trojan Nation didn't go crazy. They are like, well, it is what it is. They need to move on. Will Howard, Kansas State, is now going to Ohio State. It's not the end of the world, right? But I will say this, and it, this is the biggest gaping hole and I, I feel like we all missed it. Uh, it is what it is. We could address it now. There needs to be another quarterback in the room. There's no quarterback in the recruiting class, right? Their quarterback that was behind Miller Moss in the Holiday Bowl is graduating. The two quarterbacks on the roster were number 28 and like 32 or something like that. They're walk-on guys who just happy to be on the team. They need to get another quarterback. So the question is, do you go get a quarterback that's a big name and compete, which I think they should do. Everybody knows where I stand on that. But I guess that's not my question. My question would be this. How do you address this quarterback depth issue? And how, mu how many more quarterbacks do you think is needed in order for SC to be in a safe position? I will lead off with you, Jamal. 
Yeah, it's it's interesting. I don't think it was necessarily all that surprising that Will Howard is going to Ohio State. I think it's a combination of factors. At the end of the day, I think USCJ said it really best. It's not just about playing for USC. It's about getting that bag as well. And and I think in addition to that USCJ, what I would add is it's about that playing time too. It's about the bag and it's about the PT. And when you look at the, the big contenders here for Will Howard and how they played out in bowl season, it seemed like Miami's eye on the prize was Cam Ward. You know, Cam Ward was there, Cinderella, and everybody else was sort of plan B, C, and D. And I think there was probably a lack of appreciation that Will Howard felt from, from Miami. Then when you look at, obviously, the great performance USC had against Louisville, the six touchdowns, officially the start of Miller time, I think Will Howard realized, whoa, okay, I'm going to have to really compete here for this job. And then when you juxtapose that with the Ohio State-Missouri New Year's Six game where Ohio State looked like a 1930s Ivy League team running the wing <laughs> tee uh, with Dustin Brown at quarterback, he said, well, you know, I think I'm going to be able to get the bag, I'm going to get the big name, and I'm going to get the playing time at Ohio State. So this ended up becoming a home run situation. So Will Howard obviously moving to Ohio State. Cam Ward is sort of the puzzling one to me. I expected him to go to Miami. And the fact that he announced to go to the NFL draft. Now, he hasn't hired an agent yet. So he's leaving the door open from now until January 15th. If someone comes in with just a crazy offer, and I think he's kind of leaving that door open for some desperate team. I don't know if SC is going to go crazy in terms of breaking the bank for Cam Howard, given kind of what his going rate was before. And I think that number is only going to go higher moving forward. DJU obviously is at Florida State now. And so that leaves a couple of options, right? You've got the kid out of Liberty who's in the transfer portal. I don't know if that kid is truthfully kind of top end D1, given what we saw kind of Oregon do to Liberty. Uh, I think that's going to be a little bit more of a project for Lincoln Riley. And I think if he's in the business of projects, you might as well go and get kind of a five-star kid out of high school where you've got a lot more runway. You can build habits at an earlier age and really sort of fortify the quarterback position, the way you see it in your mold. And then you've got Jaden Delora, who's still sitting out there from Arizona. To me, that's again questionable. Look, Arizona went on this phenomenal run to 10 wins. They're going to finish top 10. I mean, Jed Fish, my goodness, if it wasn't for Kalen DeBoer, we'd all be talking about Jed Fish for National Coach of the Year here. But the reality is Arizona went on this run after benching Jaden Delora and giving the, the keys to the kingdom to, to Fafita, uh, Noah Fafita. And so if you're not good enough to start at Arizona, how can you possibly be good enough to start at USC? So I have sort of some questions and concerns there. To me, Fred, to kind of completely answer your question, I think you need two more quarterbacks. You only have two in the room right now. I think maybe you can take a flyer on the kid from Liberty or a Jaden Delora, and then I think you need one more kid out of high school to sort of round it out and at least get to a room of four. Because right now, that is the concern. God forbid something happens to Miller Moss. He takes a hit. Something happens. I mean, you're really down to your emergency situation. And again, it's a new world uh, of, of college football here where nil and playing time in the bag matters so much because you've got the quarterback whisperer in Lincoln Riley. The man, you know, Ryan, I know you mentioned this last show, Four of the 32 starting quarterbacks in the NFL all can be traced to Lincoln Riley in some way, shape, or form. He's, we can talk all day long about his ability to build a program, his emphasis on defense, you know, things that he says with the media. The one thing you cannot question is his ability to build quarterbacks and build an offensive system. And the fact that he flew to go visit Will Howard, the fact that he was very aggressive with some of these quarterbacks, and the fact that he's come up empty and that we are in this situation that we're in, partially due to the greatness of Miller Moss in terms of that performance. But it is a little concerning that someone whose bread and butter is sort of quarterback play can't get another quarterback in the room, and we're still in January. So I think, Fred, we need to get two more guys, maybe take a flyer on one of these remaining guys in the, in the portal, and then try and get somebody kind of a late signee in, in February uh, from high school. I, I th- also think if you can get a guy that has the qualifications, I don't I don't think the JUCO route will be a bad way to go. Yep, you know exactly. Because I mean? he has mm-hmm. he has the college experience. I think the JUCO route would be the best way to go. I will say this to counter that, 
I think Miller Moss turned everybody off because when you look at it, Cam Ward announced after Miller Moss performance, Will Howard all of a sudden went radio silent and came interested in Ohio State. So those guys were afraid to compete. The people who do come in, I mean, in the reality, like I said, they need to say, hey, it's an open competition, but people know who's the, who the number one quarterback is, going at least going in the spring. So that's the I, – I don't really put it on Lincoln, but – I kind of put it on Miller, but I, it's a bittersweet thing. You know what I mean? Like now we need depth and we can't get depth because way Miller wins. So it, it, that's, this is just my kind of that. USCJ, what do you got to say about that? Yeah, I, I, it's, it's a scary situation. I, I absolutely think we need another quarterback, but it, it's this environment that we're living in now. Everybody is the right now, want to play, want the bag. And so the question is, who can we, who can we possibly go get? I, I love that. I love Jaden Delore last year. I think he had 4,600 yards. His numbers was right up there with Caleb Williams. So, I mean, and, and we can also argue that he's probably more of a Lincoln Riley style of quarterback than Miller Moss. Now, I love Miller. To me, Miller Moss runs that offense to a T. I don't, I don't think – I personally thought Lincoln, well, Miller Moss ran that offense better than what Caleb did. And there's no disrespect. Caleb does some phenomenal things. He's a much better athlete than a guy like Miller Moss. So he's able to – do unorthodox things, but the way Miller Moss did it, he could not depend on his athletic ability. He had to, you know, run it to a T, step up in the pocket. So that's kind of how I saw the thing with Miller Moss. Now, um, as far as the options go as quarterback, I know that the former Oregon State guy, I can't remember his name, but uh, he's committed to Michigan State now. I know Lincoln Riley, uh, supposedly, allegedly, they had some talks with him. He's from Southern California. I thought they were going to be able to get him as well. He's a true freshman, right? I thought they were going to be able to pull him through, but um, I seen his mom put some stuff out on social media that yeah, to me, that would have been a perfect guy just to be able to come in there. Um, so Jaden Delore, him, and then along with the guy from uh, Liberty, um, he was at Tennessee actually before he went to Liberty. So I can't remember exactly what happened, but um, you know, he's a little, it, it, you know, Liberty. I mean, I guess listen to hearing that name Liberty, it, it has us all lost in the sauce. So, you know, nobody, wants to think of, you know, the phenomenal quarterback coming from Liberty. But he did go to Tennessee. Um, I think he he might have been like a three-star coming out of high school. And so – but I think with the quarterback, the options are like kind of limited right now. And I think the J.C. option may be the way USC has to go right now because everybody that's come, coming out of the portal um, – of course, we just seen Malachi Nelson today, um, you know, uh, allegedly – getting ready to head toward Boise State. I mean, can we get Malachi back? I mean, that's unbelievable. I mean, did you guys hear that today? I did not. Yeah, I did, did but yeah. that's, that's that's ridiculous. We're not it, – it, It's crazy. We're so, no Will Howard's not even – he's not even coming anymore. I mean, Malachi, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, come on, man. I mean, you got an option. To, I mean, you under a great developer. But that speaks – to me, the Malachi situation, and I don't think a lot of people really realize this, that, that speaks to me more so of I don't want to be in the limelight. I just want to play football. I just want to be away from not not saying you don't want to compete, but you, you just kind of everybody, like you say, everybody, the line, what well, Jaywalk says it on my show, everybody can't be at USC and compete in those type of lights. And he just probably wants to play football in a, a location that's kind of, you know, rural. And that may be the direction. But so I think the options are limited. Mr. Dyru. Yeah. Uh... I mean, not too much to add, but I, I know, Jamal, you heard this, but what, what's tough about college football in general, especially at, especially at the quarterback position, is is that development piece. And, you know, just a few days ago, Miami Heat coach Eric Spolster came out talking about uh, Jaime Jaquez out of UCLA and saying he was so rare because here's a guy that was able to develop as a basketball player under Mick Cronin at UCLA. I know we don't talk UCLA here, but it's, it's relative because he developed and we're seeing Hawkes plays so well for the heat uh, right now in the NBA. And these quarterbacks, unfortunately, just because there's so much pressure on them to, you know, try to get to the NFL and you have to start to get that. Or so they, they've been told and think it's, I got to start right away. I got to get playing time in this. And so guys don't want to come in and it's not even about competing. They don't want to come in and have to sit for a year. And so that's the hard thing, even with transfer guys, especially, is no one's going to transfer from a starting job to then go sit mm -hmm. unless they truly believe sitting that year will elevate them further than playing for a smaller program. So it's really hard. You guys mentioned the Liberty guy, Caden Salter. 
he's a guy I think it would be wise for him to sit at USC. Cause I, here's the thing as of right now, this is Miller Moss's team that can change the next six months. But as of right now, Miller Moss, I think is a starting quarterback. I mean, obviously right now he's the only quarterback, but anyone coming in, it's his job to lose. Salter has two years of eligibility left. USC doesn't have a 2025 quarterback in the recruiting class. Also Julian Lewis is 26. He may reclassify to 25, but either way, you don't necessarily want to start a young 17, 18 year old freshman right off the bat. So that 24 year Miller Moss, I know has two years too, but if Moss balls out, Salter sits a year develops under Riley, it could be his team in 24. And then you move to Lewis or, or someone else after that. So that's a lot of, house of cars that have to happen. A lot of things have to go the right way, but that's kind of got to be the selling point, I guess, at this point to get one of these transfer guys is, Hey, we want you to compete. Never know what can happen, but even if you don't start, you're in a best spot to develop. It's we, it's basically your team potentially in two years. Um, but that's hard. I mean, they got to add, they got to add at least one. And like everyone's saying, probably two, I like the Juco route. Definitely get, get someone there. And you know, when the portal reopens again in the spring, I'm sure some guys will bounce back in that and and that's where USC will probably probably if they don't in the next couple of weeks pick someone up on that second portal window uh, in the spring. You yeah, know, so- Ryan, the one thing I'll just add there to I mean, excellent point there. I mean, the one selling point you could do to Salter, what I and I think it works with Salter. I don't know if it works with Delora considering he got benched this year for him to have to sit another year to wait. I think is a yeah. price too high. For a kid like Jaden Delora in USCJ, to your point, because he had such a great 22, right? And so now to sit two years and and become kind of yesterday's news, even if it is an opportunity to play at USC, I don't know if that risk reward is really worth it for someone like a Delora. For someone like a Salter, it's an excellent selling point. And you're not just creating some sort of hypothetical scenario. You can actually share a very real life scenario with a lot of USC's rivals and counterparts. Take Dante Moore, for instance. Dante Moore went from starting at UCLA. Now he's going to go to Oregon. He's, pres- he's going to compete for that job with Dylan Gabriel. Presumably, Gabriel's going to win that job. And he's going to sort of develop in that system and then have multiple years of eligibility remaining to be the keys to the kingdom to really a power in the Big Ten moving forward. So that's definitely a selling point to Salter to be able to bring him in the door and something that I think would be very attractive to him. I think the question is for USC, almost like you're kind of in this dating world where the transfer portal has become the bumble of, of USC, you know, of, of college athletes for, for the school as well. Can I do better, right? I mean, can I do better than Salter in terms of being able to kind of push Miller Moss in the spring and also create depth for myself? And I think that's the question that Lincoln Riley is going to need to ask himself. So I'm not high on Salter. And I'll tell you why I'm not high on Salter is because Salter played in a triple option offense this past year. And you have to learn a lot of things to play triple option. And you have to break those habits. And so I know people say Lincoln Riley is a quarterback whisperer. But to break those habits, I think it's going to be tougher than people expect. You know, you'd win a whole year, you played a bunch of games and been through a lot of practices playing that triple option. Then you got to start breaking in and going to new keys and reads like that. I'm not a fan of it. I will say this, though. I do like the early signing day because there's still an opportunity to sign a a high school quarterback. There's an opportunity to sign two more high school quarterbacks and a junior college quarterback. And then, like Ryan said, you still have the opportunity to get a backup quarterback or two out of the transfer portal after the spring. Once that period open, once guys like, you know what? I'm not going to play here. Let me go try somewhere else. Maybe I could go develop at USC under Lincoln Riley and Cliff Kingsbury. So that's the opportunity, but I'm not high on the Liberty guy. I, when I saw it, I was like, Oh, okay. But he's a triple option guy. That's a lot to break in a year. Well, or maybe two years, like you said. So maybe in the two years of the development, it might work, but that's just a lot to break. I, 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 I don't see it. I don't like it, but I mean, it is what it is. We can go from there. But all is not lost, though, because like I said, we got another signing day, first Tuesday of February. We got another portal. So I think it can't happen. But I will say this it needs to happen. It can't miss. That's the one part that cannot happen. Two spots that you can't miss is you cannot miss at defensive line in the portal this year, and you can't miss at getting quarterback depth. Every place else you can miss because we see that they're good and young and that they're going to be really good, and there's no problem. You miss that D-line and you miss that quarterback, future ain't bright no more. We just turned the lights off just like that. You know, <laughs> so so yeah. like those, those are things that we kind of have to worry about. 
So that that that's what kind of question me. Um, so yeah, that's where we are. So we got the state of union in. We talked about quarterback. We got a good show in. We had our guest USCJ in. You guys got anything else before we wrap this thing up? No, nope. I'm just I'm just excited to be on here, man. And uh, I, I think, as you stated, the future the future is going to continue to be bright. And to and real quick, I think Jamal to to your point about um, some of these other quarterbacks. What what is Dante Moore? Are, are the Oregon is probably possibly holding him with some NIL, and so that's what that's you know is USC willing to give out the bag to hold somebody um, as far as the quarterback? We know how you know it's essential right now. We know we need it. That's the only thing I would add. Um, will USC because if we want them, you know what teams are doing, and for Dante Moore to go from UCLA to starter, and now he's sitting behind Dylan Gabriel. The question is. Will USC be willing to do the same thing? That's the only thing I would add. Um, we know we need it. And history tells us now, lately, I mean, you talk about the defensive tackles, you talk about the quarterbacks. Man, I'm seeing so many phenomenal guys, whether it's Walter Nolan. I mean, you could you, the list goes on and on and on. Interior play. Are we willing to give out this bag, man, to secure these guys? That's the question. So I will yeah. say this. I will say this about NIO. And I'm going to try to keep this as discreet as possible. There was a kid committed to one school and they offered him a big NIO number, a very big. I'll give you the number 850. They offered him 850 to come out of high school. He flipped and or oh, shit. The school <laughs> that he went to, the school that he went to offered him 650. So there was a difference in number. I don't know how NIO works, but the school that he was originally supposed to go to offered him the bigger number that he flipped and went to. So I, I don't, that's a lot of money. And people are saying SC's not big on the NIL thing, but you know, like there's money being offered. And yeah, like I said, I don't really know how I wish it was around when I played. So I could tell y'all how this thing is getting offered. <laughs> hey, well, Hey, let me, <laughs> let me say this. I, I talked to a lot of people on off the record. I, I'm not gonna put any names out there. And I've, 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 I've heard the numbers. I've, I've talked to some people that have actually – and these numbers are real. Oregon yeah. is throwing out some serious money, and it's it's unbelievable. It's like – I mean, does the Nike money ever get old? And so it's, it's – if people don't think it's real, I mean, they are naive to the fact that this is the new environment that we're living in right now, and this is a part of it. And I, and I hate it because it's – to me, it's not – you know, the old days, what Pete Carroll did in recruiting – that that was real recruiting. You had to go to the trenches. You had to go in the Southern California area. You had to go all throughout and really recruit. But now you got to do that, but then you got to put something on top of it to secure these guys. And so to me, that's the difference. And so when everybody brings up the recruiting rankings, uh, look, to me, you're not you how are you a recruiter of the year if you if you're enticing somebody to to bring them over to you and get the bag. To me, that's not real recruiting. I will yeah, say USCJ, that. it's a, it's a great point, and you know I think it, it, I'm really happy that you brought that up because it is a brave new world out there, and I'm just going to use whole numbers. I'm not like basing it off of anything. So just for the sake of a conversation here, look, your recruiting class every year, whole numbers, take you know plus or minus four, five, six guys, you're probably going to go get twenty in high from high school, and you're probably going to go get ten from the portal. So your your class is about thirty. Okay, roughly, let's say based on sort of what we're hearing, I'm not going to put specifics, conservatively, it's about probably half a million dollars a player. So at half a million dollars a player for 30 players, that's $15 million. That's a $15 million NIL cap that you got to have or an NIL endowment that you have to have just to be competitive. And so how many schools are in a position year after year to give 15 million just to pay players it's your your name's not going up on a building you're not giving it to cancer research you know you're not giving it for social justice you're not getting it back in the way a phil knight would be getting it back if i'm you know sort of leading nike and it sort of re recreates itself with merchandising and media and all of those things or if i own a conglomerate of restaurant chains or car dealerships where, hey, if I go give that money to my team, then those folks and those parents and those boosters are all going to kind of buy from my car dealership where it's almost an investment. 
you know, in the cases where it's not an investment, how many schools are in a position to be able to call up 15 people and say, I need a million dollars every year, no questions asked, after tax? Or call up 30 people and say, I need half a million dollars every year, no questions asked, after tax? That is a tough sell uh, for any school. And I think USC is trying to figure out where they're going to play Because at the end of the day, USC doesn't have the founder of Nike as a USC alum, right? I mean, that's a very unique position. They don't have the oil money of Texas. They don't have kind of the cultural ethos of football the way you have in the South. Obviously, USC has a lot of money, but they've got a lot of media money. They've got tech money. They've got real estate money. There's other priorities as well uh, for a lot of major donors. So how do you get football to the top of that chain to be able to compete with the very top upper echelon of this sport, I think USC is still trying to figure out whether or not they're truly the Dodgers and the Yankees, or maybe they're the Mets, or maybe, you know, they're somewhere in between. So it's a terrific point there, USCJ. I think they need to cap it. And we talked about that. So they legit, so if you look at the root, root cause of this, the NCAA just opened Pandora's box. And we talked about this before. There's like, you know what? We're done with it. The SEC has been doing it for years. They keep getting caught and we're not punishing them. Everybody gets to do it now. Like, let's just do it here. But we know they say the story is California signed the bill and Florida signed the bill and Texas signed the bill. And the NCAA was like, you know what? You guys get NIL. The problem is that it's they opened the box and didn't put any rules on it. And that's the NCAA's issue all the time. They just make a rule and don't think about the outcome. They just don't want to deal with it. They need to cap it at class. Even if you're in a portal, you're capped at a class. So freshmen get 75. Just just numbers. Freshmen get 75. Sophomores get 100. Juniors get 125. Seniors get 200, right? They need to do it in that situation because now, no matter what your classification is, me jumping in the portal, I'm jumping in the portal because I'm not playing. I'm not going to chase the money. Now, if you have an opportunity to get money from somewhere else for NIL, like commercials and those things like that, then that's all you. That's your own money. But NIL money needs to be capped and regulated by the NCAA, and it has to be because they they have two Wild Wests now. They have the Portal Wild West and the NIL Wild West, but it's the same coin. It's just two different sides, right? All they want is to go get the NIL money. But if I'm a sophomore and I can only get 125 no matter where I am, then people are going to start thinking about, man, do I really want to get in the sport or am I happy sure. with this money I got right sure. now? You know, so they need to cap it at a number. I don't know what that number is. They need to figure the number out. But once that happens, I think the portal will start to subside. And then you will really start to see the portal like guys who are like, man, I'm lost in the wash. Let me go try somewhere else. Right. Or I'm just not happy here. Let me try to get closer to home. Or the number one recruiter when I coach, the number one recruiter, the person you can't outcruit is the girlfriend. The girlfriend wins the recruiting battle 100% of the time. I miss my girlfriend. I want to go to my girlfriend's school, get in the portal, go transfer. It is what it is. But no matter what, you get that same NIL money at that cap. Doesn't change. I think that will fix the problem. And just to add to that, and Jay, I'm curious if you've talked about this on your show at all. We've mentioned it before, but a a cap could maybe alleviate this. But what we're seeing a lot, and especially why a lot of these, especially the young kids that are entering the portal, is a offer is not necessarily a contract. So like a kid gets this offer of 850 or whatever, and then the school maybe can't deliver because like Jamal said, maybe the booster didn't pay up or maybe they didn't have these other. So it's, there's not like agents yet. It's there's some people have agents like Malachi has agents, but then some people it's their parents, some people that represent themselves. And so a school can offer gets the kid all excited. They don't deliver. And then they hit the portal because they're pissed off because of the money. And it maybe had nothing to do with football at all, but they were promised one thing didn't get it. So, I mean, it's just the mess. Well, yeah, you, have you talked about LJ? I was actually told, yeah, to your point, I was actually told that, that that's some of the reason that those guys from Texas A&M, um, they exit out of there because they didn't get some of the promises that were made to them. If, otherwise, those guys probably would be staying there right now, um, you know, just staying that. But, you know, it, it's happened with – it's happened at some schools. I'll just say that. It's happened at some schools, and a lot of people, um, they were promised money and it wasn't getting it. But to, um, to Coach Rose's point – I truly believe, you know, you, you got certain schools. I think it's Oklahoma, SMU. It's it's a small number, but I think 25,000 all across the board 
um, a year just for every player on the team. Just, I mean, they're getting something. You know, when I was in school, you, I mean, you shoot twenty five thousand dollars. Are you serious? <laughs> I would have been, I would have been happy. But you know, you just need something. That's, and I think that's the difference between a collective. A collective is supposed to supposed to look after that aspect of it, and then there's the NIL. The collective is one thing, but then NIL that is name, image. That's that's Caleb Williams. If you got a name like that, it's not gonna hold the same weight as a as as a guy like uh, just uh, uh, I'm not even gonna say uh, Jake, the backup quarterback, Jake Jensen. Um, it's not gonna hold the same weight. So he, he's gonna benefit off of his NIL aspect of it. But then you need the collective that's gonna help keep the other players happy as well, just to keep a balance between the mix. So. Look, they need a whole committee for this that's going to figure this thing out because at the end of the day, um, apparently Oregon is feel, f- figuring it out right now because they're able to get their backup quarterback um, that was a five-star guy that once was committed, then went to UCLA, end up able to bring him back. And now, hey, they got their they got their plans for the next few years, <laughs> you know? And, and also, dude, this is what you also have to remember. It doesn't have to be legit monetary compensation, right? You get schools like Utah who know they can't afford to play players. Let me go to the local car dealership. Let me get all my players, all my, all my players' trucks. I'll take a truck. They're you know trying. what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I'll take a truck. Like, so like if a Boise does that or Bowling Green or anything like that, like, Hey, can you outfit our guys with trucks? Yeah, I'll take it. You know, those, those people take those types of things. So it's also proven that it, it's, it doesn't have to be monetary value, but to Ryan's point, like you made in the past, it depends on the coach. Lincoln Riley can't give all the USC trucks. You know, all the everybody on SC is not going to take a truck, but everybody on Utah is going to take a truck because it's just a different type of style of culture and different type of style of play. And it is what it is, but out a truck works for one team, money works for the other team. And where SC is now, it's the money. You want to go to Hollywood, you want to get the money. I will tell you this if I was playing and NIO was a thing, I'll be on that Popeyes on the corner by that big church. They'll have my poster on that Popeyes. I'm like, look, pay me what you can. Even if you pay me in food or if I come in here late at night with my friends and you let me eat for free, I will take that. But I grew up in a different time. You know, I'm not. So I can't speak for these kids now. I can only speak for NIL for me. You put my poster on there and say your local Trojans eat here and I get free Popeyes and you shoot me $150, $400 every month. I'll take it. You know, so hey, we're still drinking that that free fight on pale ale. That's still enough. Drink fight. <laughs> yeah, so that works. Well, yeah. you know, you know, Fred. I mean, it's a it's a great point. Even with like the truck guy, right? In a, in yeah. our example here, the reason the truck guy works is it works when you're in a smaller college town. To your point about University of Utah, Bowling Green, kind of some of the examples that you gave. Because think about the truck person, right? If I give in a small town, I give all of the players trucks. Everyone in that locale is going to say, this is the official sponsor of the football team. And if you're in a football crazed kind of college town, all of those residents are going to say, that's my person. That's my guy. I'm going to go buy a truck now from this person. And essentially what you're doing is it's paid advertisement. So even in that particular situation, there's an ROI. That business owner, rather than putting his or her name on social media or on billboards or doing all of this, these things, he's created, you know, 30 brand ambassadors. They're just players that are driving around town and it becomes kind of a marketing ROI. And so that works in a smaller town. Does that work in LA when, you know, you're a huge city and, you know, just because one person does it for one team, I mean, there's 14 teams in LA college and pro. So there's just different business dynamics as well that I think we're all still trying to figure out. It's a fascinating time. Yeah, definitely. Yep. And it is what it is. And we're still going to keep learning and still keep growing from it. <laughs> it's very fluid. Hey, so I just want to end it with this. Uh, in 1912, there was a newspaper writer and he went out to a track meet in Los Angeles. And he said that this track team was undermatched but had a long way to go. But the way they fought, the school name fit them. And that day, they fought like Trojans. And ever since 1912, the University of Southern California has been named the Trojans. And that's how I want to end the State of the Union show. USCJ, I appreciate you for coming on. Go ahead and shout out your show so all 
we pretty much saying this share the same followers, but you might get some sooner fans because we got a shit. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, once again, I, I definitely I appreciate all you guys, man. I, I when I'm not watching my show, I'm watching you guys' show. I try to get involved with all the SC shows, man. So likewise, um, it's, likewise. It's USCJ on Twitter, uh USCJ32 on Twitter, USCJ32 on Instagram. And then my show is USCJ. I literally just changed the name, USCJ, Lost in the Sauce Podcast. I got all kinds of shirts and all kinds of stuff going on to connect it with my channel. But it's USCJ. If you type that in, you can find me on YouTube, man. Yeah, definitely. appreciate you guys. Yeah, right. I pre- I appreciate you for coming, man. I like I like the camaraderie. Hopefully, you could get like I said, you could gain a couple of Sooner fans. Um, like I said, this was actually Ryan's idea. So hopefully. All the other SC podcasts, man, we're open for collaboration. Uh, Jay, hey, I'm welcome. bringing you guys. Uh, hey, you guys. Hey, you guys gonna get a pass. You guys coming on mine too. Yes, <laughs> let, us, let us know. Let us know any day, any time, Absolutely. man. Yeah, I appreciate you, Jamal Ryan. You guys always know I love being with you guys. This is fun. I love talking ball all day. Jay, these guys know I love talking. I could talk ball for three hours, and don't let me get the board out. Then I'll really get to talking. So we can get really going. I appreciate you guys. I think it was a great start to the new year, man. Good show. Jay, once again, thank you for coming on. If you guys want to get into fantasy, go to Underdog Fantasy. Go to your Apple Store or Google Play or UnderdogFantasy.com. Put in code USCLAFB. You get up to $100 match. Once again, if you want to watch the game on Monday, don't forget to go get yourself a fight on Pale Ale by Stone Brewery. It's all right to drink fight on while you're watching the Huskies lose. Either <laughs> Hey, I appreciate you guys again. You guys know how it goes. Live free, fight on.